Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now you're definitely familiar with the 3060 Ti and 3050, but have you heard of the AFOX RTX 3060 Ti and 3050? We've checked out AFOX cards before, including the GTX 750 and RX 6500 XT, but today I want to look at these two 30 series GPUs. For those unfamiliar with AFOX, they started out as Foxconn's branded graphics division before being established Established independently in 2008. They've continued to expand since then with offices all over the world and a growing list of products including but not limited to graphics cards, usually sporting no frills designs. I've got the 3060 Ti and 3050 here of course provided by AFOX, though as always my thoughts are my own and the cards were sent to me for the purpose of review. First things first, and I need to mention the boxes. Both the 3060 Ti and 3050 make me feel very nostalgic. Not enough companies have pictures on their boxes anymore, and I was just talking about this the other day actually in my $1.50 graphics card revisit. It reminds me of the days when I walked around the PC store with my granddad looking for a replacement for the dead Nvidia 6600 in our Pentium 4 family PC. Let's focus on the 3060 Ti first of all then. Inside the package we have the card itself, the usual documentation and an 8 plus 8 pin to 12 pin adapter because this specific card uses the 12 pin power connector design found on the Nvidia Founders Edition card. Those only have a single 8 to 12 pin adapter though. There's actually two models listed on the AFOX site, this one with the 12 pin connector and plain cooler and another card with an 8 pin connector and green accents. I prefer the look of this one. It's a pretty chunky card with a lot of weight behind it, it's got an aluminium backplate with a sort of wrap around design and the heatsink itself is a nice size with effective cooling capabilities. The dual fans don't stop under low load like you might see with other models, they spin at 30% fan speed according to Afterburner, but they are very quiet, and even in games, this remained so. The fans spin up to about 40% and the card didn't exceed 65 degrees, at least not in my gaming tests. I haven't set a custom fan curve, this is just what I noticed after playing a handful of games over the past few days. I am sat next to an open window with an open air test bench though, so bear that in mind. The AFOX 3060 Ti also has a touch of RGB here, not much, but just enough to remind you that you are using a pretty capable card even towards the end of 2022. My opinion on the 30 series is bittersweet because of availability and pricing over the last couple of years, but it's nice to see both of these factors improving. Even though we can probably expect 40 series cards at some point in the near future, the 30 series cards are still excellent and, as prices inevitably drop, options like the 3060 Ti here are still very much worth keeping an eye on. This AFOX one shares the same core and memory clock speeds as the reference design and as I mentioned earlier it is cool and quiet when it comes to gaming. 1440p is no problem and it's quite surprising just how well it does. It's nice to have a new 3060 Ti in my hands as well, not one that I paid way too much for online and had been used to do who knows what with. I'll never forget that. I bought a Founders Edition card on eBay and then they came back in stock on the Nvidia site for the first time in ages. As we continue with the AFOX 3060 Ti tests, it's worth noting again how little noise this is making. I do like the cooler on here, it's fairly big but not obnoxiously long, and it's easily removable if you want to take it apart for whatever reason. I only did so for the sake of getting footage, but it's always nice to know that something is easily disassembled just in case you want to give it a thorough clean up after long term use for example. Now let's move on to the AFOX 3050. This is a little bit different by design of course, we've lost the RGB in favour of printed lettering and gained this blue tribal pattern around the cooler. Again we've got an aluminium backplate which makes the card feel sturdier and weightier by default which I quite like. 
Just like the AFOX 36 DTI, this one also has continuously spinning fans, and just like the higher end card, they are very, very quiet, ramping up to about a maximum of 40% speed under heavy load without creating any custom fan curves. Temperatures once again stayed under 70, and I am of course sitting by the same open window using the same open air test bench. This card uses the traditional 8 pin connector as found on most if not all of these cards, and it's ideal for those who want a more cost friendly yet very solid 60 FPS gaming experience at 1080p, maybe beyond in some games. Just like before, this AFOX card wasn't making much noise during my tests and I was even able to turn on ray tracing in Marvel Spider-Man Remastered without the fans starting to race. This game ran surprisingly well with over 60 FPS on average, actually, and as a 30 series card we also have DLSS support, which will no doubt help extend the lifespan of this more entry level focused GPU, but as of yet there aren't many situations where I'd actually recommend it over just reducing one or two of the settings and playing on native. If you want to play games on high with RT enabled and need a little bump in performance to help you hit a certain FPS target then sure, but personally, and these are just my opinions, I would rather reduce the in-game quality and play at native 1080p with a card that's capable of doing so like this one is. Now both of these AFOX GPUs are very capable in their own right, both fit into their own respective categories if you will. Both cards have solid dual fan cooling solutions and both keep a low profile under load. It's almost like some cards have to scream, I'm gaming at 60 FPS, but not these two. I've always thought of AFOX cards as offering a solid no frills experience. They get the job done with minimal fuss and that sort of applies here too. That's by no means a bad thing. In in fact, it's quite the opposite. The loudest part about both of these cards is probably the box art, and that's how it should be. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching then. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Let me know what you think of these cards down below in the comments. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. There'll be a link to the AFOX website and to both of these cards, of course. And hopefully, I'll see all of you in the next one.